It's been about a year since I built this shed and I made a series of seven detailed video episodes all about it, plus a high speed version of the build from start to finish. Links to all of those videos are down below in the description box. Anyway, since then I've noticed a few problems with the shed and I thought it'd be worth making a video to cover them in detail and share my learnings with you. The first one is a pretty minor thing and it's something I expected to have to adjust anyway. When I built the shed I left about a 3mm gap between the edge of the door and the shiplap cladding on the wall and that was too small a gap so in the winter when the door got really wet the wood swelled and I had to take some shavings off the edge of the door using my cordless electric planer. Not a major issue and it was one I was expecting to have anyway. With jobs like this I'd rather leave the door slightly too big and have to make adjustments to it later on rather than cut it too small and have a big ugly gap. I think I took off maybe another two to three millimeters so it seems like five to six millimeters would have been the optimum gap to leave for a timber door of this size which is about 850 millimeters wide to allow it to expand and contract. What's more of an issue and is also another issue with the door is that I noticed in the winter the door developed a slight bow outwards by about 10 to 12 millimeters or so in the center and I think what may have caused that is that I didn't leave enough of a gap between each piece of shiplap cladding when I built the door so as the outside face of the door soaked up moisture from the rain each piece swelled causing the bracing pieces on the back of the door to bend out of shape. Now that it's summer the wood has had an opportunity to dry out again and the door is now almost completely flat hopefully you can see that from this footage there is still a very slight bow but honestly it's fine. That bowing of the door wasn't really significant enough to warrant me building a new door for it though. It still opened and closed okay, so it's one of those things I'll probably just learn to live with. Although a good solution to this issue would be to paint the shed door with either an exterior grade paint or with some kind of clear water repellent sealing product so that the wood would be much more resistant to soaking up moisture. I don't really want to paint the door because then I'd have to paint the whole shed and I quite like how it looks unpainted so I will probably try one of those clear sealant products. Even though the door still opened and closed okay when it was swollen, my main concern with that bow in the door during the winter is the potential security risk as any gaps around the door could make it easier for someone to potentially break into the shed. To protect the edge grain of the OSB floor from soaking up moisture I wrapped it with a damp proof coarse plastic which sits in between the edge grain of the OSB board and the shiplap cladding creating a moisture barrier. However, there was one piece of the timber frame here that I didn't think to protect with the DPC plastic which is this piece that the door closes onto at the bottom and during the winter the door soaked up moisture which soaked through to that piece of timber via capillary action and then this piece of timber passed it through to the face grain of the OSB board and I was left with some water staining on the OSB. That staining is now pretty difficult to see because the floor's pretty dirty but it is there. If I'd have left that as it was in time the OSB board would eventually start to rot and crumble away but fortunately I noticed it quite quickly so I added some more DPC to the front edge here and that has completely resolved the issue of moisture passing through. Another possible solution would have been to simply cut away this piece of timber as it's not really needed from a structural point of view but I was quite happy just to add a piece of DPC on there. After all I'm not too bothered about how this shed looks aesthetically, this is just a storage shed after all. Elsewhere on the floor there is no sign anywhere of the OSB board soaking up any moisture so I think that that trick of using the DPC to protect the edges of the board is a real winner. Now on to what was definitely the biggest and most significant issue. During the build I added a couple of vents to the soffits where the roof overhangs the walls allowing airflow through from one end of the shed to the other thinking that that would be sufficient. But I was very wrong. Now I don't go in the shed a lot during the winter because the stuff we have stored in here is mainly stuff like lawn mowers and garden tools which don't get a lot of use during those winter months. So anyway after a few months of the usual drab wet weather that we get here in the UK I was quite surprised when I opened the door one day to find mold spores all over the ceiling. This can't have been caused by moisture getting through the roofing felt because even though I did make a few mistakes with the roof felting process which you might remember if you watched that video I did a pretty thorough job at it and also I think if moisture was getting in through the roof it'd be more likely to be in one area and what I had here was quite an even spread of mold spores across the entire ceiling. Also the worst areas of mold tended to be those that were tucked away in corners away from where the air is able to pass through from vent to vent which leads me to believe that it must have been due to lack of airflow on the inside of the shed. 
creating condensation on the ceiling. In hindsight, the situation probably wasn't helped by the fact that much of the timber that I used to build this shed, like the shiplap and the framing timber, was still quite wet having been through the tannalizing process as the wood gets pressure treated. So presumably there was also moisture evaporating from that timber and condensing on the inside of the ceiling, possibly. I don't know, that's my theory anyway. As soon as I noticed it, I opened up the door and let plenty of air in for a few days to try and get the ceiling to dry out as much as possible. I then bought some of this mold and mildew spray cleaning product. I put on a respirator and some safety glasses and thoroughly sprayed the entire ceiling. And with this stuff, you basically let it sit on there for a bit and then give it a good scrub off. It was a horrible job to be honest, but it worked really well to clean off all the mold. But in some areas, there were still some mold spores visible and I've been back over those with the spray a number of times but I can't seem to get it off so I'm pretty confident at this point that it's now clean and free of mold. I think it's just a bit stained or something and I'm not sure there's much else I can do with it now other than potentially paint over it to hide it but again this is a storage shed I'm not really bothered about how it looks so I doubt I'll bother painting the ceiling to be honest. I decided it'd be a good idea to add some more vents. So I bought some of these, these are actually soffit vents and I added a few of these to the back wall of the shed and a few to the soffit above the front wall too. Meaning that lots of air can now pass through not only from one end of the shed to the other but also across the shed too. And I'm hoping that by the time this winter comes we won't have a repeat of the same issue again. If I hadn't noticed the problem as soon as I did, the plywood used on the ceiling would have started to delaminate as a result of soaking up moisture and it would have started to warp, twist and eventually fail. But I think I caught it soon enough. I hope I caught it soon enough. I hope that this video doesn't discourage anyone from building their own shed. I enjoyed it and I learned loads even though it was a little bit stressful at times, especially not being able to source the materials that I needed at the time. It also wasn't cheap either. And having seen the price of timber increase since last year, the situation is obviously even worse now. But anyway, I thought it was important to put this out there as it'll probably be helpful for anyone considering building their own shed. And it's nice to learn from other people's mistakes, i.e. mine, rather than you learning from making your own. Aside from the issues mentioned in this video, I haven't had any other problems with the shed whatsoever. It's been great. That's it for this one. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do that on Patreon or YouTube channel membership. Links to both are in the description box below, where you can also get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.